It's Saturday, April 15 here at the West End Gun Club. It's almost eight o'clock. I'm out here on the main firing line. On a usual weekend, this place would be pretty filled up, but the range is still technically closed for limited and non-member access because of the creek conditions. However, I put some, I should, I will put some footage of me driving in. The way the creek is right now, it's pretty easy to get through. I, at least I think it's easy to get through. It looks like the water kind of diverted instead of going into that one section, it's been all coming spread out. Like it's spread out through the entire creek. So it's, you know, it's maybe six inches of water in various spots and in the main flow, the area where it usually flows, it's like maybe still a, a foot, uh, two foot dip, but the water is pretty calm. So I don't know. I, we, we were, uh, the other match director and I were talking and saying, Hey, why don't they just redirect the water in some fashion? Just go upstream about 50 yards, put out rocks or whatever to cause the river to like divert out or the Creek rather. There was some reluctance to do that. I don't know. There was some discussion. I didn't go to the board meeting last Tuesday cause I had some other, other things to do. I couldn't go to the board meeting to see, to hear the discussion. In any case, we're out here on the main line. I usually don't shoot on the main line, but this goes to hundred yards. And as opposed to the upper line where I can shoot rifle up to 300, there isn't really a spot to put a 50 yard target. See here on the main line, they have 25, 50 and, and hundred yards roughly. But I just wanted to re-zero. I wanted to verify the zero on the Voodoo 360 at 50 yards. And I'm gonna do a little bit of testing at hundred yards while I'm here. And then we're gonna go ahead and, and I was already shooting my Gen 1.2, my Voodoo Gen 1.2, just to do some velocity comparisons in same conditions. And right now, my data is showing 20 feet per second difference on center X between my Gen 1.2 with the 20 inch MTU versus my 360 with the 25 inch uh, 1.250 contour. Uh, but let's go ahead and get some more rounds down range. I got some other ammo that I wanted to, to retest in the 360 in the barrel and that 25 inch barrel. We'll also do the testing at hundred yards, which I didn't do last time I was out here. And then maybe if we got time, which we might, we'll drive up to the upper line and we'll try to shoot some 200 yards, uh, 200 yard rim fire. You can see here I'm running the magneto speed and lab radar at the same time. Regularly I get asked why I choose one over the other in certain situations and people, some people don't realize that I own both. I will typically just use the magneto speed on a rifle if I can. The only reason I have the lab radar out right now is because I was shooting the other Voodoo, my Gen 1.2, and I didn't feel like taking the magneto speed off having to readjust the bayonet on the mount and then uh, putting on the Gen 1.2 and then putting it back on the 360 and readjusting the mount. If you got multiple guns, you're trying to shoot it uh, during a range session, you want velocities from both, it's easier with the lab radar. Or even an optical chronograph, to be honest, because you don't have to set up your magneto speed specific for that gun. Because magneto speed, when you mount it on a gun, it's specific for that gun. And you have to, if you're gonna put it on the barrel, you have to reshim it. If you have it on a, on a arc mount like mine, you have to, readjust the placement and adjust the elevation. Well, you shouldn't, well, yeah, you'll have to adjust the elevation of the, of the bayonet because your chassis are gonna be different with respect to the uh, axis to bore or the distance to the bore. In either case, there's reasons for both. And that's the only reason I have the lab radar out right now is because I'm shooting multiple guns, but I can actually take it off right now. I don't really need it in place, but I was just keeping it out there for reference in comparison to the magneto speed. And if you're wondering, the difference right now in between the magneto speed and lab radar is roughly, well, I only have two sets of, uh, two samples here. Uh, 1040, three feet per second. That one is a difference of five feet per second. So it varies between three and five feet per second. And that's what I've noticed. Uh, the magneto, the magneto speed will typically be faster. Uh, it's skewed a little bit faster. I think, which I think makes a little sense because lab radar is based on sound, magneto is based on the, the detection of the bullet 
in comparison to the bayonet in terms of the magnet, so, or the, you know, magnet of field, rather. So the magneto speed, in theory, should be more accurate at the muzzle, and then the labrador will probably be more accurate out to distance. Um, but just keep that in mind. But I feel like three to five second difference in skew shouldn't be too big of a deal for your ballistic calculators and your and whenever you're trying to calculate dope. Uh, but yeah, let's continue shooting. Um, just an aside, I was wondering why I was hitting low. I dialed 1.8 and I was still hitting low at 100 yards. It's technically 109. I I forgot that the 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 target placement rail that they have out there is not a true 100, 100 yards. That it's closer to 100 meters, to be honest. And I'm too lazy to go down to the condensed container to grab my, my target stand. So we'll just run it at 109. We'll do our test at 109 yards. And we'll uh, adjust accordingly in terms of our, our group analysis when we do the uh, Ballistics X pictures of those, of those targets and then map the, the MOA accuracy. Making a trek out to the 100 yard line, we'll just pull the target. But I'm testing out this new gimbal that I got for my camera. I don't really buy much camera equipment anymore, uh, although I have been thinking about getting a basically a uh, new camera because I think I need to go back to full frame and at least for photography. But uh, that being said, I do a lot more videos than I used to in these vlogs. And I like the idea of a gimbal because even with image stabilization, I found that the hand holding a camera is still kind of shaky. So I decided to get a gimbal. Gimbals are not too expensive right now. You can get them under $1,000. This one that I'm using right now is the DJI RS3, which I picked up for $550. So we're just going to play with it. Hopefully this is smooth footage. Hopefully I'm even in frame. But we'll go ahead and... Take a look at this target and I'll try, I think I can do something kind of cool where I can use a trigger to straighten out this gimbal and kind of show the targets here. Honestly, a little disappointed, I will say, with these targets right now. Uh, we'll take them to the line and we'll kind of analyze it, but they are more than an inch. Granted, this is 109, so over an inch at 109 is not too bad. Uh, if you can see in this right target here, uh, this one's Lapu super long range. That's a five inch, five inch string or five, five inch, five shot group, five, five shot string. That's pretty good at 109 yards. In either case, that's the, uh, the targets and hopefully they're, in f they're in focus too. I think I have autofocus on and continuous autofocus. Anyway, let's go ahead and get back to the firing line. I know this is not gun related, but here's my gimbal that I have. Just wanted to show this off. This is the DJR S3. You can see my shadow here, and uh, it's pretty nifty. So far, I haven't really had a chance to play with it too much. This is my first time out here, so it's all experimentation. Uh, anyway, hopefully this can yield a little bit more stable footage handling. I'm hand holding my EM1 Mark II, which I use mainly for for a still photography, and then my GH5, which is on this camera. I use specifically for videos. Quick close up of the 50 yard target. This is the start of the day. This is the Lapua Center X that I got from the Lapua Rimfire Performance Center in the Gen, uh, sorry, the 360 five shot group, then recentered it. Uh, the windage, two tenths of a mil left. We're good to go here. Then I shot a 10 shot group of that same ammo, which supposedly does not shoot anymore in my Gen 1.2, in the Gen 1.2, and that's a 10 shot group. So I have no idea what's going on with my Gen 1.2, why it just suddenly wants to shoot that ammo again. It's hilarious. Uh, what else did we do this morning? 
This is going to be CCI standard velocity, five shots, CCI standard velocity, five shots. And then this is SK rifle match, which was fine here, except this low deviation, which was a significantly slower velocity. And this is SK long range match, which is not too bad. Uh, it's a little bit over an MOA at 50 yards. Not sure if I would want to shoot this one, but it's not too bad uh, as far as ammo on this gun. But let's go ahead and take a closer look at the 109 yard target. My camera is showing some weird, I don't know what it's doing here. I don't know, it should be in focus. Uh, this is going to be center X, center X, center X. Uh, pretty significant deviation as far as the elevation is concerned. This is a five shot group of long, uh, Lapua long range, another five shot group of Lapua long range, which is not too bad at 109 yards. It's actually, when you take a look at it, it's a little bit better than you expect. And then, uh, then it looked in the scope and this is Lapua super long range, which is really nice. And then it kind of opened up here. Uh, the center X, I want to perform better. So, you know, NRL 22, we shoot hundred yards. This is probably doable. Granted, this is 109 again, I probably should have gotten a frame to put out there, a stand to put out there, so it's going to be a true 100 because the accuracy deviation doesn't really scale out truly with uh, with rimfire. So maybe better to have a 100 yard true target. In any case, let's go ahead and head up to the upper range. We'll shoot some 100 and 200 again. I'm walking out to the 100 and 200 yard uh, impact area just to pick up the targets. Uh, I'd usually drive out there, but I wanted to mess around with this gimbal a little bit more. So if it seems shaky, hey, I'm still learning how to use this gimbal. In either case, I shot some Center X long range and super long range at the targets. Uh, it's a variable wind condition. It's technically 97, I think I said 97.7 and 196.5 are the true distances for these targets. Uh, I think they shot okay, at least 100 yards. Could be a little bit better in terms of the groups. I did notice that the ammo was speeding up. So center X, I think I was topping, finally topping out at 1070 feet per second in the last 10 shot string that I fired with center X which is a huge deviation from this morning, which uh, was around 1045, 1045 feet per second. So ideally, I think in these weather conditions, that's kind of ideal, uh, 60, I think I said it was 60 degrees right now. Granted, I am shooting indirect sunlight. So the barrel and the ammo is technically kind of heating up, comparatively speaking to the ambient temps. And if it's because I'm breathing hard, it's because I'm walking uphill. <laughs> and so, I don't know, we'll see. Because you expect this barrel to slow down uh, 25 inches, 25 inch barrel compared to a 20 inch, 20 inch MTU, uh, it should be slower. But this morning, in the 50 degree weather, I shot the 20 inch MTU and center X. So I thought I heard something. Center X, and that was shooting 
1060 compared to 1040 on the 360. So 20 feet per 20 foot for uh, 20 foot per second difference. In any case, let's take a look at the 200 yard target, or technically 196. So I think my dope for the uh, groups here, sure, I only flip my camera around here, my screen. I shot super long range first and I was over the top of the target. Main adjustment, here's a five shot group at 200, which is really good actually. And I shot 10 more, sorry, five more with Lapua long range, which is this year, one, two, three, four, five. Trying to beat the wind conditions, shooting fast. This was center X right here. So the first two round, three rounds, then I adjusted and then one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and a couple dips here. So 200 yards center X, is it all that great to be honest? Uh, granted, I don't know, was I shooting fast? I was trying to shoot fast, but long range, long range and super long range at 200 or 196 yards is not too bad, not too shabby. Uh, but we'll see, but let's pull this one in. So here we got the 100 yard target. Actually, my gimbal's hitting the uh, microphone here. Uh, here's a 100-yard target. Uh, actually, not too bad. Uh, I have to go review what I was shooting where, but I believe this was long range, actually, and this was super long range. Um, but I'll have to review what I was shooting here. This was, yeah, this was center X, center X, and then... Uh, Long range is super long range. You expected long range to, sh or super long range to shoot tighter because it tends, to get, it usually does. But this is a good five shot group at long with long range. I'm about to wrap up this range session, pulled in my targets. But just to kind of summarize the range session here, early this morning. Well, sorry, my gimbal. I'm trying to adjust the joystick here, holding the camera. I uh, went down to the main line to shoot 50 and 100, and just decided to reconfirm my zero. Then we came up to the upper line, and we were shooting at the 100 and 200 out there and then pretty much uh, got some targets and data. As far as the Voodoo is concerned, the 360, doing pretty well here. It's definitely starting to heat up as far as velocities are concerned. And uh, we'll keep an eye on that. I'm gonna clean it when I get home. Uh, I need to do my round count, but we're probably at around, at least, uh, I wanna say we're at least around, when we shot 164. We're probably at 300 rounds right now, 300 rounds in the pipe. So I'm gonna go ahead and give it a good cleaning. Uh, I know a lot of people go a little longer with rimfire before cleaning, but I'm going to go ahead and give it a good cleaning. I figure it's a good time to do that, and uh, we'll see how that goes, and make sure the no carburing develops. As far as other things I want to do, still need to, sorry, I'm going to hit my trigger here. Doesn't want to, there it goes. Double click on trigger. I'm going to still write my review of the Sharps Mountain Gear Range Office, which is this deal here. If it's on the tripod, tripod, organi tripod organizer. Gonna have a review of that. I have a few other things coming in. So, got my Sig Kilo 6K here. Finally sent in my 8K again, because my Kilo 8K out of nowhere just stopped taking readings. Like maybe 19 times out of 20, it would not give a reading. Called up Sig on RMA. Uh, they've had it for like, they had it for about three or four days and they just shipped it out on Friday. So I should get back that, get that back and hopefully we'll see that they fixed it. Not entirely sure if they, you know, what they did. Uh, we'll find out when I get the invoice. As far as the Voodoo is concerned, let me just this here, here we go. The Voodoo 360. I've adjusted the weights. Crap, let me move this tripod out of the way. I adjusted the weights and I took out one, two, three, four, I think four weights, four in the rear weights, and I still have some inner weights and the outer weights. And this is gonna be a little bit front heavy. Uh, our balance is right about here without the bipod, and it's gonna be a little front heavy with the bipod. And I think that's gonna be the ideal choice for me to run this gun. But we'll see, I need to get down to the rimfire range and we'll do some practice drills with it eventually. And uh, I think there's gonna be no other changes to this rifle. So I put this little deal here. This is kind of the uh, Weed Air. This is a Weed Air scope mount, 20 MOA base. And uh, I got this little deal. I, I had intended to put it on the side here because I was gonna put it on the side like on my Voodoo Gen 1 with the spur mount. Put it on the side here and have the send it level running vertically. This is a little too large, so I ordered the smaller version, which is kind of sold out. So I'm gonna wait for that to arrive and then I gotta get another send it level. 
Send-up levels are out of stock everywhere right now. Ever since MDT bought them, I think they just haven't brought production back online. So if you don't know, MDT acquired LRA, I think, and then now they have the rights to the send-up level, that electronic level. But I need to get another one for this. I don't want to keep swapping send-up levels. Granted, that's kind of expensive, getting another one, but I think they're 200 bucks. But I'm going to get another one. Um, anything else I'm going to do with this gun? I don't think so. Nothing else to be done here other than to get some more practice with it, break it a little bit more. Then I'm going to have a review. I already started writing a review, but we will get a little bit more practical time behind this rifle before I complete an actual review and publish it. Uh, I think that's it to mention here. Oh, and last thing, uh, just uh, for people to know, I uh, have a 40 MOA base. It shipped with a 40 minute base. I have the Weed Air 20 minute scope mount. And with a 50 yard zero, I can run this all the way up and I get 33.5, 33.4, let's say 33.4 to be comfortable here because you might have a dead click there. Two, three, four. 33.4. I have 33.4 mils of elevation available on a zero compromise ZC527, which has 35 built in. So that's a pretty good sweet spot with it all stacked up in these tolerances. So we are good to go on having maximum, but pretty much close to maximum elevation without getting into some uh, sketchy things where you might have to get another mill for some reason if you're changing environments or whatever. But anyway, that's it for that. So I'm trying to, I'm trying to mess with this gimbal. Sorry guys, I know this vlog is probably gonna be kind of weird. Uh, a little bit longer with some weird takes, but in any case, uh, that's it for today. Going to pack up the rest of the gear and get out of here. Today is April 4th, 15th, 15th, April 15th, Saturday here at the West End Gun Club. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next vlog.